So this is uh, this is kind of a homecoming of sorts for you, right? Absolutely. I mean, at any time I come back to Michigan, uh, you know, I'm from Ann Arbor, and uh, I love coming back to Michigan. I, I don't love that it's most likely going to be 10 degrees. Um, but, yeah, you know, whenever I land in the state of Michigan, I take a deep breath, and I go, all right, Michael, <laughs> you're home for a second. These people get you, and they understand you, and it's great performing in Michigan. Uh, it's my favorite place to perform, and I, I'm – I do not say that everywhere, just to you guys. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because um, does Laugh Fest is it? It's it's in its fifth year now. Is it starting to get a reputation uh, amongst the comedy community as, as a good yeah. place to, to go? Well, I mean, in the first year, it was getting a, rep- a reputation amongst the comedy community because it's such a small world, and I was at the very first Laugh Fest and. Everyone came back to L.A. and New York and just immediately was, was raving about it. It's, it's the perfect size city um, for a laugh festival. It's big, so people are um, well-educated and smart, and, they, and they, they, they know about the world. But it's also small enough that the community backs it completely, and every single shop you go into has the Laugh Fest logo. And um, it's just the warmth that comes from people from the Midwest. So... I think now what's happening is people outside of the comedy community are starting to recognize it, and it's earning a reputation that's well-deserved. I had so much fun my first year, and now I'm back, which is so cool. Now, you say you're from Ann Arbor and you're from Michigan, and yet you took your tennis talents and you went to Illinois with them. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Why did well, you do look, that? We won, we won four Big Ten championships, and we never lost to Michigan once when I was at Illinois. <laughs> so I, I, I have to say that uh, I think it was the right decision. Um, you know, I, I, I had a unique opportunity when I was playing in junior tennis in Michigan and the coach that was coaching at university of Illinois is a coach named Craig Tiley, who's now the tournament director of the Australian open. And it was just a very unique opportunity to work with a great coach and a great team. And, you know, people in Michigan were a little bummed about it, but, uh, look, do you want to go to college exactly where you grow up? You know, I kind of enjoyed getting out of town for a little bit. Well, my dad went to the University of Michigan, and he used to tell me Ann Arbor's a great town. Uh, University of Michigan's a beautiful campus. Too bad it's filled with jerks. Yeah, but, well, <laughs> you know, there is nothing better than – I, I, I can't consider myself a Michigan fan just because I went to Illinois, but I do enjoy watching them lose at football occasionally just to watch my friends freak out. I mean, the, the, the arrogance of a Michigan football fan is the only thing I can compare it to is the Yankees fan. I lived in New York last year. Um, you know, it is, it, it's definitely got an edge to it. And, and some of the fans are for me too much to handle. And it's always so funny because you drive an hour West and you're in East Lansing and it's a completely different attitude and a completely different type of fan. But, uh, Look, I'm an Illinois fan, so no one is ever cheering for my team. We lose to everybody, so I feel very comfortable making fun of Michigan. Uh, you went on to play professional tennis. At what point did you decide stand-up comedy was the way to go? I think when uh, I'd been playing pro tennis for four years, and I realized that I'd made $11,000 over four years. <laughs> and I said, even if I tell crappy jokes, I think I can do a little bit better than that. Well, so, not, not a lot better. I've, I've done stand-up comedy. Yeah. It's, it's, tougher, it's tough getting going in that field as well, isn't it? Yeah, my, my very first paid gig as a comic was uh, underneath a bowling alley in Garden City, Michigan. And <laughs> I was bombing and no one was laughing, but you could then hear above me, you could hear people throwing strikes. So... It was this weird dichotomy of me failing and then immediately hearing somebody being successful above you. And I got paid, I think I got paid $17 and I was able to get uh, <laughs> order a sandwich for free. So you're right. There isn't a lot of money, but uh, things, things have been improving for me in that regard, and that's awesome. Well, well, how did, I mean, where did you get the idea to do stand up? Have you always been a funny person? Was, it, was there something that, that drove you in that direction? Well, I think I think anyone who's who's from a big family and is the youngest child, I'm the youngest of four, all all we really want is for our parents to pay attention to it. You know, there's just so much stuff going on in the house. All I want is mom to stop and give me two minutes. And so uh, that never happened. So as soon as I did stand-up comedy, I go, oh, man, this is filling the void of my parental acceptance that I needed so badly. So 
I say it half jokingly, but but it's also half true in that um, I, I always would do little skits with my family. I always enjoyed writing jokes down. Even in, I have a, a journal when I was in fourth grade with little joke ideas. I mean, what fourth grader is writing joke ideas? It's so weird. So it's just something that's in my blood, and I think my big family, um, uh, there's a lot of room for humor there, and I think that's where it came from. You have a very, you know, a very you know, kind of observational style and, and it's clearly honed. Did you have like a uh, uh, comedians that you, you looked up to when you were growing up, when you were making those I, joke journals? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, my, my mom took me to um, my first stand up comedy concert was uh, Dennis Miller. Remember Dennis Miller? Yeah. You know, he was so smart. I loved his arrogance. Uh, I probably understood 5% of what he was talking about, but I loved his <laughs> performance style. And then I would go see Bill Cosby. I loved watching Bill Cosby perform. It's weird how that whole story has is, is, uh, gone in a different direction. But um, loved watching Saturday Night Live. But the comics that always inspired me were the Don Rickles and the Dennis Millers, for sure. Yeah, I loved how he would drop these weird references in there. And sometimes you had to look them up. You had to go, I mean, I, I, I used to, sometimes when I would watch his HBO show, this was before the internet, of course, he would do his rants, and I would sit with a notepad and write down his references <laughs> so I could look him up later. I mean, he, you know, he was he he was so smart and so funny, and I just loved. Uh, but to me, there, there's something very funny about a com- about a person who's arrogant because we're all going to die anyway. You know what I mean? So it's uh-huh. funny that that a, that a, a comic plays the arrogant card because it's just so. Um, to me, it's it's such a dumb move, but that's what makes it fun. And, and I think it's interesting you brought him up because you you kind of do a, a comedy take on sports on Fox, and he did Monday Night Football for Correct. a while. And and yeah. I think I was one of the few people who enjoyed him on Monday Night Football. I I, I loved it too. Um, Dennis's Monday Night Football run was uh, as unsuccessful as my run on Fox Sports. But um, <laughs> you know, comedy and sports don't always mix because. Sports fans don't really see a lot of humor when their team is losing. And, you know, I would call somebody on that show, I would call somebody a shooting guard, and then I would get nine hate tweets to me (laughs) saying, hey, hey, idiot, he's an off guard. And I'm going, I don't even know what the difference is, but uh, sports fans are, are relentless. Yeah, it, 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 it's it's weird that you bring that up because you're right. Sports and, and humor doesn't mix, but it should. I mean, it's not a yeah. – it shouldn't – sports shouldn't be serious. It's it's all gratuitous. I mean, you know, we're we're so lucky in North America to be folks so hard, so focused on sport because quality of life is so high. You know, for most people, so it shouldn't be taken so seriously. It is all you got to do is watch an English pre- Premier League soccer game and you realize how serious they take it as well. And and really, when you talk about sport, you're talking about community and you're talking about uh, the people in that region and everyone for the, the history of the world has taken their region their community seriously and that's what it comes down to yeah that's tr- that's true did you did you see in tennis when you were competing professionally a, a sense of humor amongst anyone or were, were all those people wait because <laughs> well, I, I had to have a sense of humor because i kept losing <laughs> um but you know some some people are funnier than others as athletes you think about the professional athletes you see now some of them have good sense of humor Peyton Manning seems to have a great sense of humor uh as opposed to somebody you know like Ray Wright uh Ray Rice who you know I don't know what his sense of humor is like but he was in the tabloids for the wrong reasons this year um you know to be really great at anything I think you have to be obsessed with it and uh, athletes that are great at their job, they're not focused too hard on being funny. They're focused on, on their job at hand. Well, Michael, thank you very much for spending a few minutes with us, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing you uh, next week at uh, Laugh I, Fest. I can't wait to be back in Grand Rapids. Thank you for inviting me, and we're going to have a great show. So thank you, JoJo.